This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. F7, page 135, chapter 26, Intangible Assets, IS38. An intangible asset is defined as an identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance held for use in the production or supply of goods or services for rental to others or for administration purposes. It should be recognized if and only if there will be probable future economic benefits attributable to the asset flowing to the entity and the cost can be reliably measured. The benchmark treatment is cost, less accumulated amortization and impairment losses. But there is an allowed alternative to treat it on a revalued basis, less accumulated amortization and impairment losses. If following the alternative, revaluation should be fair value by reference to an active market. And all assets in a class should be revalued unless there is no active market, in which case we should follow benchmark. Revaluation exercise should take place regularly so that carrying value is not wildly different from fair value. Internally generated intangible assets should not normally be recognized as intangibles and expenditure previously expensed should not be reversed and capitalized. This would represent a change in accounting policy which should only take place if it's required by accounting standard or by law. And in addition, it should make the financial statements more relevant and no less reliable, or equally more reliable and no less relevant. Development expenditure is the most likely intangible asset to be examined, and it subdivides into research costs and development costs. Research costs fully further subdivides into pure research and applied research. And I've never really understood why we need to do this distinction because in both situations we need to uh, expense the expenditure immediately. Development costs should be capitalized if they satisfy the criteria. There should be a defined project which should be environmentally satisfactory and technically feasible. Expenses should be clearly allocable and capable of reliable measurement. Resources should exist to carry the project through. The extent of deferral should be restricted to assured recovery. And just a warning, do not write back any costs previously expensed. You can remember the list by the mnemonic deferred. With reference to amortization and disclosure, Development costs and intangibles should be amortized on a systematic basis over the estimated useful life, which should not normally be more than 20 years. And if it is more than 20 years, then no amortization would take place, but clearly the situation should be reviewed each year. Amortization should commence when the asset is available for use. The amortization period and method should be reviewed at least annually. Recoverable amount should be reviewed annually and impaired as necessary. Disclosure. Distinguish between internally generated and other intangible assets. Useful lives of assets and amortization methods should be disclosed. The gross carrying amount and accumulated amortization, both at the start and the end of the period, should be disclosed. Which item in the statement of comprehensive income includes the amortization expense and if it's research and development how much has been charged this year as an expense <laughs>